Welcome to Moonbase 2. Welcome to the Moonbase 2 Podcast. My name's Andy, Cobra Commander TFW, and I'm joined this week by the man stalked by a giraffe. It's Mikey G. Wolfie 3. Hello, Mikey. Lemur the dicks. Lemurs are dicks, apparently. Yep. Little shits. How's it going, Mikey? Is it going good? Gonna go to Madagascar and hunt them all down. Oh, yeah, that was a thing, wasn't it? Mm. I tried and to watch that uh, Sasha Baron Cowell uh, thing on a, a new show called Who's America? Or whatever oh, called. yeah. I, I tried, and I, I can see why a lot of people would find it Guy funny, lost but... his job over that show. What's that? One of the, well, like, there was some guy, and he got him to say really terrible stuff. Oh, right. And, and he got sacked from his, like, re- Republican representative job or something like that. Like, like, I see why it's funny, but as a show... Uh, but mm. it still feels very cringy. For, I feel a little cruel. K- yeah, kind of. I mean, sometimes he's cruel to not nice people, so it's it's it evens out. But it does. There's a there's a it's there's unpleasant. a meanness. There's a meanness to it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The the whole um. It it feels very Borat, and when I was younger, I I enjoyed Borat the film and that mm. character and whatnot. But now I, nice. I, I can't I can't do it. it. It makes me cringe far too much. I've seen it once and I, I've never felt the urge to see it again. Yeah, I, I got it on DVD because I hadn't seen it in the cinema and I watched it once and I was like, okay, I don't need to see it anymore. <laughs> I, I'm not, even though I, I saw it like six months ago, I'm now too old to watch it anymore without going, oh, oh no, oh, it's unpleasant. <laughs> this is my sister. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. But, uh, yeah. you know, people seem to enjoy it. But, Mikey, we're here to talk about Transformers this week once again. Shockingly. Never been a lemur Transformer. You know why? Because they're dicks. That's true. I, I don't know if they're dicks or not, but, you know, uh, there, there has not been a, a lemur Transformer as, as far as I'm aware. Pretty sure. Get that on it, Hasbro. Yeah, I think we're past the, the Beast Form part. Get on it, Hasbro. No one wants to do Beast Wars. We're all stuck on G1. Over and over and over and <laughs> over <laughs> Uh, we're going to kick off, though, Mikey, with some third-party stuff, because there's actually more news this week than I thought there was mm. going to be, to be honest. But uh, Quite first... a bit. Hmm? Quite a bit. Yes. Uh, first of all, we're going to kick off with Transformer Dreamwave again. We talked about them last week. They're back again. This time, we're talking about the Abominus Upgrade Kit and the Starscream Upgrade Kit. These, of course, for Power of the Prime uh, figures to make Starscream King Starscream, because that's always a thing. <laughs> it's always a thing uh, so and you know parts to make Abominus as well so there's mm. a few different little parts here it's probably best to start off with Starscream as he's arguably the least impressive and probably the one that will sell the least mm. I would imagine so what we have we have uh, hands and feet obviously he's got a new gun and he have, uh, has a big cape yep uh, he already had the crown didn't he yes Yeah. that's molded on yeah, so you get basically the big thing about this is the cape. The cape is a material. Uh, it also seems to have wires in it so it can be posed, which I think is quite nice. It, it yes. means he can make uh, the cape a bit more dynamic than if it was just a lump of cloth or a big old heap of just solid plastic. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm not too fussed on the gun. The gun doesn't seem star screamy. Why does it come in three pieces? That I also don't know. I think it's because each of them can be a separate gun. I think oh, that's cool. the idea. Well, for the other pieces. There are no other pieces. <laughs> I mean, that's true. But <laughs> I, theoretically... I, looking at this made me think, made me think I'd actually really like... Because I, I think that Star, I think that Starscream is way more flawed as Starscream is Denny the Lita. But I, I think there's something there. So I, I think it'd be neat if someone did limbs from the Seekers. like okay. Or did third-party limbs and then... Then you could have stuff like this, but it would make it feel a bit more of a complete package because at the moment they've just kind of shoved aerial bots on him, and that just feels like yeah, okay. Mm. I mean, planes that aren't his guys just stuck to him. He like you like you say, Mikey. He is very much alone uh, and doesn't really fit as a combiner limb, but uh, or co- a combiner center. But I suppose that's not the uh, transformer dreamwave problem. That's that's more no. of a Hasbro did a thing. Love the cape. 
yeah, keeps real nice. Uh, the hands and feet are fine. Again, they, they don't really match. No, they don't. They seem to have like knuckle missiles as well. I'm assuming they were made for someone else and they're like either retools or just reuses. Yeah, I would imagine so. I can't imagine that would be done specifically for Starscream because, like I say, it's just uh, just didn't really fit. Unless they went, you know what? He needs null missile wrists. No knuckles. Knuckles, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, not so impressive, but the Canole next... Knuckles. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, it I is know. the cheaper of the two sets. It's twenty four ninety nine, so $25. So, mm. this, that's that's okay. That's kind of what you would expect for this kind of amount of stuff. Uh, next, we have the Abominus set, uh, which is a bit more oomph to it. There's a few mm. more pieces. There's, uh, again, the hands and feet. Um, I don't know if the feet are different, but the hands have uh, knuckle uh, uh, spikes on them. I think the feet are the same as Starscream. They'll probably be repainted, but they look the same. I think, yeah, I had a feeling that that might be yeah. the case as well. He's also got things for his shins yep. uh, to make them more oomphy. Uh, he's got things for what would be Hungar's, uh, Hungar's shoulders. Again, I think to just kind of beef them out and help the proportions. Uh, he's also get, got little caps for the... Uh, uh, Hungar's dinosaur head, head pieces. I think he's a, he's a dog, isn't he? What, Hunger? I think he's a dog. I don't think he is. He, lo he always a... looked more reptilian than dog. I I, I, I would swear he's been re referred to as some sort of like Orthrus or Cerberus or something before. Really? I would put money down. All right. it, they've got very long snouts for, for dogs, though, but okay, we, we can he, go with that. Either way... Blood, ultimate bloodhound. Either way, okay. he's got little pieces to go on, uh, either on top of the existing heads or replace them completely. I think they're on because I'm looking at it now. I can see, like, there's a line of teeth that they're a different color from the prototype. Right. So I think those go over the top. Do you think these are just to completely replace them, even as little hats, or do you think these are just for this mode specifically? For this mode, because I think if I'm looking at... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at the robot mode pictures uh, for the individual robots where they're being used as gimmick stuff, mm. um, they are with Sinner Twin as some sort of, like, head gauntlet. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I see them. Yeah, they've put them together as, like, a, a big knuckle duster or something weird. Mm. Yeah, bizarre. Uh, so you've got them. You've also got what are the two pieces? Uh, well, was well, there's a, there's a centre torso chest kind of groin piece. Then there's two bits to the left and right of that. What are they? Are they new connector ports? I think they might be because I literally can't think what else they would be. Yeah, I think they might be. I'm just you, looking. You put them in where the combiner ports would be for the shoulders, they... just to kind of. Uh, Push the the shoulders Are they out more for the back of the robot of the combined legs. I don't think so. I don't know. I couldn't be. I I think it's to really push the shoulders weird. out a bit more. Maybe because uh, there's weird. no pictures of him from the back, so you can't really can't really mm. see. But that's just an assumption. So he's got those things, whatever those things are. We're not sure. He's got the very same gun that Starscream has, so you probably Makes more sense. About the Makes more sense in this case. Definitely. And he's also got a new head as well. Head and neck. Clearly, because yes. he's got a little neck joint, so he'll be able to be articulate a lot more. So it's a lot more of a complete package to help uh, Abominus look, I again, a lot better. It it uh, fills him out, fattens him up, and gives Plus him a lot more a pre -order articulation. pre-order bonus as well. What's the pre-order bonus? Um, You get extra wings for the side of Abominus's chest to make them look spiky, and you get a screaming face. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. I don't think the screaming face looks great. No, well, not like in isolation like that. It might look better when it's in the head. Yeah, it could be right. Could be right. Mm. Uh, but this makes the the kit a bit more expensive at fifty US dollars. So mm. it is more impressive, but uh, you know you got to pay it for is. that, I suppose. Some of it's a bit weird to me. In what sense? Well, like the new kneecaps basically are a little odd. I don't really see the need for them. I mean, does, does Abominus have particularly thin dog head, dragon head, whatever it is, head kneecaps? I don't know. I, it it, it mm. might make more sense when they're colored, because at the moment, of course, these are just uh, uncolored prototypes, gray prototypes. Mm, mm. So maybe if they're colored, it'll lend more uh, logic to it. Mm. I also don't really like how they integrate in beast mode, but I do like how they integrate in robot mode. Yeah. Um, like how the feet become like bunkers, bunker shields. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. 
Um, mm. I, I think this is primarily made for the combiner mode, and then they mm. kind of went, okay, can we do anything else with these for the robot mode and the, the animal modes? And like you say, those robot modes and animal modes, they just kind of add onto them in a very derpy way. Mm. And not all of the pieces kind of add on anyway, so it's uh, almost redundant. But yeah, they're, they're fine as individual uh, weapons, it seems. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, how do you feel about this, though? Do Starscream, Abominus, yay, nay? Kind of not really into either. Okay, but you've never I really think... been a big fan of the, the um, combined upgrades, have you? Not a lot of them work for me. Um, mm. And Transform Dreamwave style is just not to my personal tastes. Um, is like, can, is there something you can put your finger on? You think they're so over designed at times they clash with the toys that are kept in, right? Especially with the feet and the hands, like they 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 really don't go with the actual figure, in my opinion. If you want the aesthetic to carry over, mm. like the the aesthetic is very traditionally G one. The hands and feet aren't, and it always stood out to me. Um, I I think Perfect Effect does it a bit better because they have much simpler designs. Yeah. Um. Plus, like, it's just... I These are two combiners I wouldn't really go out of my way to try and get. Ooh. I mean, I, 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 like, I like Abominus uh, in, pra- in principle. In practice, I think he is decent. Yeah. Um, And, and he's never been one of my favorites. Yeah, he, I, I, I liked him. Uh, I liked mm. him personally just because of his... I liked him more for his individual robots than I did for his mm. combined mode. I don't think his combined mode as Abominus is desperately interesting, but I like all of the, the parts that make him just because they're all weird monsters. Yeah. I think, that's I think that I think that that was one of the big shames of the Unique Toys um, Abominus, that they were doing the... Like, they did Blot, and he looked, like, incredible. Yeah. This really bizarre troll monster that turned into this really solid robot mode. And then as they went through each of the individual robots, it became very clear that most of them were sacrificing hugely just to combine. Do you think making Abominus more into... Not a direct parallel, but more into a Monstructor kind of creature, so he looked more like, if you would, if you'll run with me on this, an Abomination. You know, yeah. so maybe his ar- one of his arm is not just one arm, but it splits up into like two smaller arms maybe hmm. instead of one having a hand it's just got a giant claw arm or i'd like, like some that. real inventiveness and that kind of thing um yeah, but that's, that's probably going against what people would want from an abominus though but i, I was just yeah. thinking it would make like maybe don't even have the head on top of his uh you know where the neck would be put it down into his his um his chest like he's like he's hunched over or something yeah yeah, just yeah. Uh, again, it would break up the silhouette and make it a bit different. But yeah, again, mm. the, the, this is something people probably wouldn't want. <laughs> this is just yeah. something that would, you know, it would fit his name better than Abominus, and he's just a standard robot just with purple on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Whatever. Whatever. Yep. This is why Whatever. we don't make toys. <laughs> uh, Mikey, do you want to tell us about another upgrade kit though coming up? Yeah, this one is from DNA Design, who I love because they did that crazy bludgeon, um, which, which I still will. Oh, the Samurai the, the, one. The one that is totally not a Transformer and is entirely uh, a anime mech from a from a series where there was a war years and years ago, and it's this is the age old prototype that in the right hands can take you know take down the hyper inventive can travel through solid matter modern robots. You're saying it's a Gundam. It's no, no, no. This is like <laughs> what there was what break night, I think it was called, or something like that. It's just like, night. oh my god, they've got like he's instead of like a laser cannon, he's got this f- like old four port, just like propulsion gun. Hmm. And like that sword is totally coming out super heated whenever it's drawn. Okay, like, it totally is like a vibra blade or something like that. I have a whole whole fiction in my head for that toy. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Andy, hey, Mikey. <laughs> I'm t- How could you call me a nerd in this podcast where I'm about to talk about D- DNA Design's DX09 Studio Series Voyager Megatron upgrade? Hey, I like that. That's a, that's a good swing back around to what we should be talking about. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, For SS Megatron. Ooh, oh, no. Awesome. <laughs> ah, you didn't think that one through. Um, But yeah, so this is going to replace the arms and add a few extra parts to his vehicle and robot mode. Um, these will give a movie accurate and transformable right arm slash cannon. Um, to be fair, when they say transformable, it seems more like you have an arm and then you have a separate cannon piece you put on round it. Yeah, well, I suppose you can't 
warp physics to make it grow. <laughs> yeah. Um, you also have uh, an extra part for tank feet and uh, for the tank mode. Uh, da -da -da, and they will serve to fill in gaps on the sides of the robot mode. Yeah. So you can see here on the tank mode, they act as those weird wings that were on the model, but were really exaggerated in the Voyager toy. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, they were super exaggerated on the Voyager toy. Yeah, and That's here, cool. the new parts fill in his side, fill in his back a bit more, and fill in the, the feet a tad. Um, and I, I like how they've done... There's a lot of emphasis on foreground in these photos. Hmm. Um, and the first production exclusive gift will be a Megatron with burnt, damaged head, which... <laughs> is more based on the Dark of the Moon version than the one that was actually in Revenge of the Fallen. Oh, certainly, yeah. Which was like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, but... Um, from what I hear, this is a really solid toy. Um, I think this is a really nice upgrade, because I am one of those guys just like, I really wish there was one that showed him with the regular arms he had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that's really noticeable is that the new pieces are painted, and the main toy really isn't. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's not super distracting, but it is. You can you can tell one is just like you say, matte plastic. Mm. Um, but I think if you do have these toys, these are certainly worth considering if they're going to be a decent price. I don't think they're the pre-order up for that. Oh. I'm always hitting my bloody mic. Um, I don't think they're the pre-order up yet, but um, yeah, yeah, these are just preview page pictures from their Facebook account. Mm. So yeah, I think um, it's one to keep an eye out if you if you have that toy and you you think it's pretty solid, but you want to have a more flexible aesthetic. Yeah, I would say if if you feel it's missing parts, which it kind of is, and these are parts that you feel that you can't live without, it's it's a good way to up it a little bit, mm. give it that extra shine to the the egg. Uh, and maybe, maybe you just want to go and dry brush it a bit with some fancy metal paint and just uh, bring them up and bring yep. up the, and then you can hopefully match the arm, the new arms to the uh, the toy itself as well. Yes. Yeah, it, it's it's not bad. It's not bad. Like the current movie toys, I I don't really have anything against apart from I have no interest in them because of the movie stuff. But it it looks nice, looks fancy. Hmm. Shall I take us on, Mikey? Take us on to some thick. Let me tell you about some thick, thick, some some transformers that don't transform though. So you know, <gasps> action <those>. masters. <laughs> Fuck off, everyone who said that in the last week. Did people I'm say not... that? Actually, I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if they did. If I hear the word action master used one more time, they gave the the power to transform up to be no, uh, stronger and faster. No, they didn't. They did. <laughs> you don't know what action masters actually are. You don't know what collectibles are. Stop saying action masters. Action masters, transformers. They I'll hunt got every the single one of you down. I like that. Every single one. This is the Toy Alliance Mega Action Series Soundwave. Full color images and test prototypes. We also got uh, images from a show, which we're going to be talking. Uh, the show we'll be talking about in a little bit, but we're going to focus on mm. this Soundwave figure at the moment. Uh, there were great prototypes of him, uh, but we got colored ones as well. Uh, he comes with laser beak and buzzsaw simply because, you know, they did one thing and they went, well, what if we color him yellow now? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, what else is there? Oh, he's he's going to be 18 inches tall, which is 48 centimeters for those who feel the need to define their figures in that kind of way. Uh, I don't see how many points of articulation he's meant to have. Uh, no, see. but from what I've seen reviews of the Megatron and he's pretty up there. Yeah, he's, he's decent, is he? He's pretty solid and it looks yeah, those are individually articulated fingers. I'm looking at the at the um show pictures right now. Mm, he is very big and chunky. Uh, mm. at the show there was a tape inside him that was like uh awesome mix of volume 2. Totally, ah, Guardians. Totally not a guy. What are you talking about, Mikey? Totally not a Gar Guardians. Guardians. Totally not. Don't worry about it. RIP James Gunn. Not actually dead. <laughs> <laughs> not not actually dead um yeah it's it's a shame i would guess that um in the case he wasn't shown to do a huge amount of dynamic poses or anything like that they just had him in the stand surprisingly tame yeah they just had him in what i would kind of say the safe sound wave pose which is a mm. standard stance and then he's opening his cassette player boob and that's about it it's like oh, okay it's not super impressive but 
I imagine that keeps him more secure in a case rather than I like, put him in this cool dynamic pose and then someone sneezes and he just falls over and explodes. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's the reason. But I would imagine mm. this thing's pretty heavy as well, right? Oh yeah, they're big. Yeah, yeah they're big. Diecast is a diecast in them because I don't know. I don't. Um, so. no, I can't. I like the guy I was reviewing just was, was just or, or was watching just reviewing the figure. Okay. Didn't seem to be talking about uh, diecast or anything yeah. like that. Oh, well, fair enough. Uh, it's worth remembering, of course, that these are fully licensed. They are technically a third party, but they are licensed by Hasbro to do these. Fully, so. This is the actual third party, yes. not the one we've made up. Yes, the, yeah, the <laughs> legit, uh, for reals, these ones. Uh, it's planned for release in 2019. Doesn't really say when and doesn't really say a price either. But I would imagine probably at least £100, 120 ish maybe more. How much was the Megatron like? I've seen them go for 180. Oh dear. Okay. Well, I was but, close. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we we know what this game is. We do. We do. Uh, any thoughts on Mikey? Because we've got the laser beak as well. Mm. Did they show Buzz though? I don't think they did. No. Um. But considering he's on the box, I'm assuming he's going to be packed in. Probably. Um. But yeah, like also laser beak fully transformable. Yeah, that's weird. That sound wave don't transform, but laser beak do. Mm. Uh, I suppose, like, you can get away with it more. But, like, it's basically a more poseable version of the Masterpiece. Yeah. Because like, la Laserbeak doesn't have weird puffed-up proportions. I wouldn't say, though, that it's a better version than the Masterpiece toy. No, I think it's it certainly looks like it'll be a solid approach to Laserbeak, but maybe... A little know. bit more stylized, I suppose. Yeah. Because he's got... Uh, the, the, sh the way that they've shaped the wings um, is, is a little odd, because they've kind of pushed the uh, part of the wings forward. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, if made it more it well. bird like, but less laser beak like. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a good way to describe it. Mm. Uh, he's very thin, of course, because he transforms, so. Yes. Do you think it would have been better if they'd uh, just made a posable laser beak and, you know, fattened him up? I don't know. Um, I don't. I can't really imagine a chubby laser beak. Well, but... when, I, when I say fatten him up, I mean <laughs> more animation proportions, because he, you know, he wasn't... Or match, this or match the aesthetic of the of this sound wave. Yeah. Um, I think, honestly, I'd, I would have rather gotten Ravage, but um, I think Laserbeak was kind of the, the given. Um, I think it's probably going to be disappointing that it'll probably come with Laserbeak and Buzzsaw. Mm. It's like, I would much rather, ha rather have a Ravage in there, but I think he, he looks solid. It's just, you know, he's a little bit on the skinny side. But um, in, in fairness to them doing uh, laser beak and buzzsaw, you will have the cranky old Muppet Men technically. True, with them, with true. Soundwave. That is kind of awesome. Yeah. Um, the actual sound wave himself, uh, you have to be into the chunky aesthetic. I yeah. really like the Megatron. I didn't really like how the Optimus turned out. Um, mm. but I think Soundwave looks pretty. I don't mean this not not literally. He looks pretty solid. Um, he also looks like a monster so it's like you need to be into this it's not just like you don't have to like it's not just you have to like it you have to be into this i i think for the price definitely you, you need um, to be all the way and you can't just be like oh i've got some spare cash mm. also i like how there's a there's one picture where I, a guy is taking a photo of something and he's in the far distance it looks like he's just so tiny and sound wave <laughs> is just huge it, to um, me it looks like he's working on sound wave like he's uh, <laughs> screwing in like bolts and stuff into him Mm. I mean, I am entirely ecstatic that we're getting more of these things because the more non -po non transformable, posable, high articulation, stylistic, or whatever designed transformers, the better, in my opinion. I'm legit um, surprised. I would have thought they would have done Prime Megatron and then gone done. We didn't make yeah. enough money. But then it turned out that another company w w was le going to do less of the oh one per year thing we thought, and we're just like oh we've got like seven or eight designs ready to go. Yeah. Which we will talk about, <laughs> but um, but no, I think I would like I like I I want to see how they do a star scream because what? Although I suspect that the next one would be Bumblebee. <laughs> I see, Mikey, you're setting your sights pretty low. I want to see how they do an RC. <laughs> 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 Just this big, thick, girthy RC. Just a picture of a coup on the back. <laughs> Extra, Extra thick. thick. <laughs> it has to be uh, the meme version with the the uh, oversaturated, yep. blown up uh, eyes. Make make a year a lost us all. Yep. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Mikey, since we've talked about one set of uh, posable non-transforming transformers, how about you talk about another set for us? I don't want to. Do it!
Your yeah, money but... means nothing to me, but it means <laughs> everything to them. Oh, uh, you know what? They're just nice guys on Twitter as well. That's the Are worst they? thing. Yeah. How nice? Nice enough that they'll help you out. No, not that nice. Not, not nice that they're nice. like, hey, would you like review samples, <laughs> even though you don't have a review channel? That's right. Um, But nice is <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, glad, you know, they lots of responses and friendly and... Fuck them. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Flame Toy, they're not going away anytime soon by the looks of it. Um, they had a plethora of figures on display from bo- three different lines. Oh. Um, they had their model kit line, which is their 4i uh, models. They had the 4i model deformers, which are chibi figures they're doing. Mm. And they had their Kurokara Curry line, which is what we've seen already with um, Taran and Drift. And, and, and we were kind of all... We saw a colored Star Saber. I think it's the first time we've seen Star, uh, Star Sabers colored. Um, and we were all kind of going, oh, okay, that'll be, that'll be the end of it. That's, we're, that's probably where this line is going to peter out, you know? Yes. That's not where this line is petering out. No, said the man in Washington. <laughs> so first of all, um, Star Saber. We see him in full color. It is IDW Star Saber. So if you are not into your genocidal, um, I don't know, West, West Baptist, um, <laughs> I don't know. But basically your big murder Star Sabers. This is not the guy for you. But if you're into Alex Milne's approach, uh, yeah. Yep. Um, and they show that his accessories will include a sword, a rifle, a shield like he had for the Masterpiece toy, and interestingly, a normal, like, base form Star Saber head. Oh. So you'll be able to give that guy a teeny tiny blue head. Oh, very good. Very which, good. Which is just like, it's almost like they give a shit. <laughs> oh, Mikey. Oh, sweet, sexy Mikey. Don't go too far. <laughs> no, but it's like... Sweet, it's supple like, Mikey. What little details can we throw in? Oh, this would be nice. These, <laughs> people will like these. I'm having fun. Um, next. Nuts. Oh my god, next. Um, so they had a figure in the cabinet, and I was just like, what is, what, what is that? Mm. Mm. So they have a lion. Yes. A lion with the big wings, and it's, it's a great prototype, So and, and a big cannon. Highly, 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 highly stylized. Super highly stylized. Um, it's Victory Leo. It is. Who doesn't transform. No. But does come apart into bits. Who you can then put on to your IDW Star Saber to turn him into Genesis Gaugaigar. To be and fair, do not... the way that oh. they've made uh, Leo, Victory Leo, he's he's not Victory Leo. That ain't the, the way that... That's Victory Galleon! Leo it's left. fucking yeah. Galleon! It's Galleon with a wing <laughs> backpack and guns. Yeah. <laughs> Even the head... And, like, I saw someone say, like, I don't see it. I'm just like, oh, that's yeah, because you've not no. seen Gaugaigar, you... No. Like, if <laughs> you, is... you want to say it's not Galleon, then the closest thing that it's relatable to is... Um, shit, was it Dan, uh, Dagan had the Oh, line? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah could, but it would be a fu- push to it, say it for that. I'd say it's, it's not. It's Galleon, it's, but all right. It's Galleon. It's that. like the combined form. It's got Gaugai Gar style cheeks. Yeah. It's got Gaugai Gar style horns. It's got Genesis feet and wings. Mm-hmm. It's got the the only thing on here. It's like you got Star Saber bits, and then you've got Victory Leo's legs, which I hope can actually be removed. <laughs> but that is a shame uh, that they're there. And he he does have the traditional Victory Saber. He's standing on someone's body. Hmm. But the boots are just, like, they're on Victory Leo's back as, like, giant guns of death. The only thing I'd say, like, is the wings are more Feiga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's certainly, it's like bits from all three uh, Gao Gaigars, basically. It's going to be really weird to see this in blue, white, red, and yellow, and black. It's going to be pretty impressive. Here's another question, though. How how dangerous do you think that lion mane is going to be? Oh my god, the amount of blood. That <laughs> thing will be dyed red. It, it, it looks like it could easily... I mean, maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be you know shaved down but it looks like it could no be no it's Jap- it's a japanese hot it's yeah, a japanese <laughs> like two three hundred dollar toy you will stab yourself and you'll lick the wound and go mm, mm. i can taste my money going away oh, but that's not all so we got to see turn which we can confirm alec milne has pre-ordered um uh, via twitter and we also saw that they are getting a reuse out of drift didn't see this coming nine now, so they're doing shattered glass based off of Deadpool drift with new molded guns. What? 
You would. What? <laughs> you would. <laughs> um, but that's not all. We also had a prototype for their up-and-coming Optimus, who will come with an axe, two movie, movie slash, I'd actually say more Transformers Prime style blades, a couple of smaller mm. axes, and a giant gun. And, oh, we had a preview image of the figure to come after that. Who which is it? It is Stealth Bomber IDW Megatron. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Who, the complaints I've seen about that is that it's not stylized enough. What do you mean it's not? <laughs> what do you mean it's not stylized? It looks enough? too much like normal IDW Megatron. It needs to look more like Kuro Kar- Kar- Like, where are your crazy the proportions? I'm just like, we haven't seen the figure yet. He'll probably have a waist about as thin as his, as his forearm. I was gonna say until we actually <laughs> see the figure, I don't don't say that. Uh, yeah. Be- if not, if not, I could see where there would be some complaints because if you're getting this line and maybe you wanted this Megatron as well, if if it's not crazy like the rest of them, it maybe wouldn't fit in. Mm. But we we ain't seen it, as far as I mm. know. Um, but then then we go on to the deformed line. These are just simple chibi model kits. Uh, so far, it's Optimus, Bumblebee, Megatron, Soundwave, and Starscream. Um, they are exactly what they say on the tin. Chibi versions of your favorite characters. Blah 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 blah. Um, I think they're cute. They're fine. Yeah, if that's what you're into, they're fine. Yeah, but you know, no. They wouldn't stop. They wouldn't stop. They w- they didn't know. <laughs> What's the line? Um, they were so bothered whether or not they could. They didn't stop to think that they should. <laughs> um, because then we saw their model kit line. And we also got some promo images. So if you scroll down a good bit, you'll get to see stuff like um, Bumblebee in full color with and without the backpack for the first time. Um, which is just like, that's an action master, guys. That's an action master gimmick. They put an action master gimmick on this figure. That's action master. Um, we also get to see Starscream's promo images, which is just basically pelvic thrust. And their previously uh, revealed um, Optimus design, they'll be doing him as Nemesis. Um, I'll be curious to see how much of this is sticker and how much of this is paint. Because, mm. like, those Decepticon emblems, I'm presuming that's a sticker. Or, the you know, the, Optim- the Autobot ones and um, regular Optimus. Um, but that's not all! Here we go again. Yeah, because they have great prototypes of Devastator. A highly stylized Devastator designed by, uh, what was his name, Akita Memia um, from Trigger. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Yep. Um, he, 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 he is very Japanese. He, <laughs> bless his poor Devastator, he has uh, some, some lady bearing hips versus his very super slender waist. I think he's certainly one that, like, like the Optimus design, it's a love it or leave it kind of look. Mm. Um, I think it's neat. Why? Why, I... why didn't Sakamoto design the face and make it into a girl <laughs> devastator? <laughs> I'd be all. I like no, no joke. I would be into that if if uh, Sakamoto came in, gave it a girly devastator face, uh, and maybe changed the colors a little bit. I mean, mm. I like. Oh man! Like, imagine you could give it the peace sign hand. And then you yep. could turn the leg up and do the Chun Li. Yatta! That'd be great. Yep. Oh my god. Sakamoto, yep. come back. Yep. But does it end there, Andy? Nine. Nine. Because then they had IDW Don Figueroa early RI for season one RID Optimus Prime. As in the exact design. No stylized. Um Who looks pretty good? Uh, we've got promo shots of him. And he looks pretty good. I like him. I like that design. It's the one thing out of the ongoing I'm glad they kept for a while. Um, But then, then they drank all the Kool-Aid. All of it. Because the next figure after that, and basically the thing that will cause my money to literally disappear, because <laughs> these are both pre-ordered the second it comes up. These are two th- figures. I am getting the idea to be Optimus. I am getting this other one. I am especially... Getting this other one. Is it not the Tarn? Because I would have thought like the Tarn would be the, the one that you'd definitely be getting. If the not tarn the Tarn, is, then the, the tarn is <laughs> The Tarn is $300. Uh-huh. Gao Gai Star is $600. That makes sense. He's uh, and good. these are $36 uh, from one web store and $40 regular retail. Y- you know what I'm hearing, Mikey? I'm hearing a man not committed. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Listen... If if I get these and I am just like oh my oh my oh my god yes I will probably be trying to get money for at least one of the Kurokara Curry lines. Yeah. 
figures, but I don't I don't know if I'd ever be able to stretch to, to Saber and Leo. But they're doing <laughs> fucking Autobot Megatron. Yeah. As in None of this, like, here's a regular Megatron with just a sticker on his chest. This is a fully licensed official model kit of Alex Milne's Autobot Megatron. Yeah. It's, it's... And because it doesn't transform, and he never did, it looks like the f- freaking comic, and not like Tarantron, where they had to work in a really bad alt mode. Uh, yes, and a minor mode. And a minor mode. <laughs> for, to, for to, to cover for the fact they worked in a bad alt mode. <laughs> I mean, I still want that toy, but holy crap! Yeah, yeah, but Mikey, Mikey, Action Masters, fuck you! <laughs> uh, yeah, these uh, Optimus and Megatron, one hundred percent pre-orders. He looks brilliant. He comes with the fusion cannon he had at the end of Morden Meets DI. All oh, right, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same design. I double checked. Um, I'd say. Do you think it's maybe, maybe not a shame? But do you think it's um. Yeah, let's say maybe a shame that the Optimus Prime they're doing isn't from John Barber's Optimus Prime, just to have it, them. I mean, they never really met. No, when there he is that. An Autobot, but it but was that is that canonical yeah. time that you could kind of put them together. And you, maybe they have that stupid shaking hand thing that they did for Revel Tech back in the day. Yeah, I do actually think that, but I also kind of accept that that Optimus is a lot like Andrew's taken him then, and and how he was a predicted actor, a lot more. Uh, conservative regular Optimus. That's true. Like, there is no way this Optimus can be anyone but IDW. <laughs> Again, that's very true. Yeah. The the Andrew and the Cyberverse design, they're both like, oh, this could be an Optimus. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I uh, these are, they've already confirmed pre-orders for model kits for, not these two, but for the other highly stylized Optimus. Uh, and he, is that the, the, the one with the sword you mentioned? Uh, the, the 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 model kit for him, you know, because right. they're doing a big version of him and a small version of him. Yeah. I think he's the only one they've announced something like that. I think the problem um, is it, it gets confusing because there's there's lots of different lines and they're obviously mm. doing Optimuses in in a few of them. Yeah, um, and he is going to be thirty six dollars uh, from DD Toys, and um, in all of the retailers he is forty dollars. Um, I've seen people go. Oh my god, I don't want to pay $300 for one of the, their stuff. I would say, if you're interested at all in the Flame Toy stuff, the model kits are a very good entry idea. Yeah. Um, and yeah, for for $80, yeah, I'm pre-ordering Optimus and Megatron. That's mm-hmm. not even a... No, if I have to sell something to make sure I've got the money on hand on the day, I will be getting these two. I'd be interested right. to know how the the big expensive ones kind of mm. feel in hand. Like what the? I mean, do you, oh, I hear really like good things. Yeah. I hear really good things. I think they've got some die cast. Yeah, it's but... it's just I want to know that that plastic feel because you know that there's a, mm. a a feel a texture in the hand of a very high quality plastic which you pay for more mm. expensive stuff that versus you know your regular store bought. Uh, From what I understand, the model kit the plastic. Dr- yeah, the drift feels, like, insane in terms of the engineering. Yeah. Like, what was it Vangelis said? Like, the amount of articulation in the leg is the amount you'll get in some figures. <laughs> well, yeah, you'd hope so with that amount of money, but... Yeah, <laughs> that is it something like a lot they, of... they haven't cheapened out on it, if that's no, the case, no, no. which is good. But that is actually something a lot of people don't seem to get, mm. like, who complain about these things. They're just like, oh, they don't transform, why am I paying this kind of money? It's just like... Yeah, they they put a lot of effort into these things. Yeah, they seem to anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, keep your eye on Flame Toys Twitter. I want to see that Victory Saber fully colored because I think that will look nuts. Um, and yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any other... so we decided to make one or two products since we got the license. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> this is. I remember when I sent them that message about Grimlock, and they said like, "Oh, we'll see," and it's just like. You know what? They could do it. I imagine this was uh, the the oh, do Grimlock. Yeah, Let's put I think that in like... the bin because we've got other shit to do first. So <laughs> get, fucking get off our ass. I think that there could be a fair. I could at least the model kit line. I could see a a a good couple of figures to come out of this. Yeah, it'd be nice to see them again. Keep on going down the the mm. IDW route and mm, get out mm. characters like uh, maybe some of the Ukarans. Yeah, maybe, that would maybe, be aileron. Yeah, like that'd be great. Like, because uh, I, I I don't see third party being brave enough to do aileron. Yeah, um, and I don't see them brave enough to do some of the more unique characters. Mm. I'm not saying these guys are incredibly brave because they have gone for although 
arguably left wing characters, let's just say like Star Saber yeah. and but, um, uh, Tarn, they're still fairly safe in that regard. Yeah, they're you know they're guys who appeared on covers and have been doing so for six years. Yeah. Whereas Aileron, like, only really came into her own recently. Yeah, but it would be um, nice to hope that, like you mm. say, at the least, if they could do a model kit version of her, or some of the other ones that we've we've never had a figure of or anything like that, mm. maybe that might be an entry point to get oh, them. Oh, man. Do Windblade, and I just want to see the boards explode. <laughs> Fucking Windblade, are you joking? Yeah, but if I mean, if they made the model kit, like, a combination of these original takes and characters and the uh, IDW designs... Yeah. I think that's, that would be brilliant. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be interesting yeah. to see. Because, again, it's something that Hasbro can't do. Because mm. the market isn't in the area of doing IDW stuff, really, unfortunately. Yeah. And I also think it's really good that this, these designs, uh, whether it's the stylized ones or the comic ones, are coming out in non-transforming lines. Mm, yeah. Because there is no compromise aesthetically. Yeah, you don't need to worry about it at all. You just focus on mm. the design and make sure that the figure's not shit. Whirl. Oh yeah, that'd be neat as well. Because can you like they? You can't do an accurate world that transforms. I don't see how you'd be able to. So yeah, I mean, remember the last world we got? People only the only reason people bought that world toy from the generations line was because of the IDW stuff. Yeah, and I'm the head was sure. vaguely, vaguely like it. The, of course, I say that there will be some people that got it because of the G one version, no doubt about that. But I think I, the I have vast to majority ask would why? be probably the IDW stuff. Yeah, I, I do have to ask why, though, would you get it for G1 version? Be- because like, what did he want... do? Well, it's not it's not that. It I, I it would be because people yeah. want to collect the G1 toys. Oh, well, yeah, there is that. But I, I, would, I would assume, and it is an assumption, I've got no proof, I would assume yeah. a majority, a higher percentage would be the IDW version. Or to I want to meet representation. the... I want to meet the person who's sitting there going, like, I, I, I'm a big fan of G1 World because of his character, and I'm just like, you need to explain this. <laughs> You, you need to explain this. Was he in the uh, Marvel comics? He probably was. Um, he, he probably was probably was. a wrecker. Well, yeah, he was a wrecker. He was in... Because him and Roadbuster, that's how they came in. Okay. And I think they died. Oh, I'll tell you word for it. Oh, God, I don't, 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 don't. T- Somewhere Andrew, Andy Turnbull is just screaming. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, shall I move on, Mikey? Yes. Well, more reveals were had at the, uh, the Wonderfest. Uh, which is where it happened, where your stuff mm. was happening. Yes, Wonderfest? Is that what yes, it was? Yes, Wonderfest. Uh, well, we've got a book turn of Masterpiece stuff as well coming out. Uh, so we'll kick off first with MP20+, Plus, which is the Wheeljack anime colours, which is a little bit different. Not, not Because I don't have the figure on hand, uh, it is a little Smoke. bit harder for me to tell. But <laughs> it's not the Marlboro version, that's for yeah. sure. Uh, <laughs> the only the, version that counts. I, I think the main difference is he's lighter, is probably the best way to describe him. He's a lighter color than his uh, official release. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I think it's just like more... More saturated. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Um, Is he essential? Again, no, not really. Unless you really have to have them all kind of animated colors. Uh, it doesn't. And he's seem not like an he's animated design, so. Yeah, it, that's the thing. It's not like <laughs> they needed to do anything different to him. Like yeah, I he, mean, if he... you look look at him next to Sunstreaker, there, it's kind of like you're from a different aesthetic. Uh, yeah, yeah. That Sunstreaker has is in a weird place. Yeah, very strange place. So there's there's that that's coming out. Uh, that seems to be a thing that they're just going back through their back catalog and just doing these pluses. Uh, to get mm. that animation thing, as that's now their, their style. We also had more images of the Optimus Prime V3 figure. Um, not not a lot of images, granted. Just one of him in mm. one pose, and then him in his trailer mode uh, and truck mode. Not a lot to say about the truck mode. I still think that the, the robot mode looks really good, uh, real solid. Looks like he's going to have some uh, shoulder swings, mm. uh, as he hasn't been transformed correctly, or the uh, prototype mold is loose and those joints just aren't holding in place with the friction and just kind of swinging out. Yeah, he can't like he can't hold his own gun properly, so uh, I yeah. I wouldn't judge I wouldn't judge like the aesthetic or the the functionality of those hinges based on this. No, no. I mean, I, I remember seeing um Vangelis give oh, this Jesus, this would have been years ago. Uh handle prototypes of the Predaking Master uh, Mastermind Creations Predaking. Do you remember that? 
mm. like 40 years ago at this point or something. <laughs> uh, and that was, that was pretty loosey goosey. Uh, but what, what do you, how do you think the, since these aren't like dynamic fancy images, this is more of a standard picture of some, some guy who's taking a photo of it. Does it make you yeah. more um, confident on it? Do you know what? It, like, what I wasn't really expecting for this was to really drive home how important it is to have that head painted. Right. Why is that? Because, uh, like, the rest of the body, I, I think you can see its engineering, you can see its articulation and everything else. Mm. The the head, without paint to bring out the detail, looks really weirdly proportioned to me. In what sense? What's uh, what's off the proportion wise? Uh, at least from these images, do you feel it's almost like his head is both too wide and too long at the same time? Hmm. I'm not sure how to describe that better. It, you know, I think it's a, an optical illusion, but probably it's it's I, it's very strange. It, I think it, do you know what I think it is? I think it's the fact I can't see that ridge down the middle of the faceplate. Yeah, that's definitely the gray absorbing the light and pulling mm. it in, and it not being as sharp. You know, the oh, smoothed yeah, yeah. him. He's he's pretty smooth all over, ladies. Yeah. So they're just continuing that. The thing I was most impressed with, which I hadn't noticed before, which I now mm. can see on here, is his. Uh, let, let's just call it the front nappy. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually on third party toys, that entire piece moves forward to do the legs. Yeah. Uh, but for this, they have individual flaps, and mm. granted, you've got a line cut uh, in for it, but I think it generally makes it look a little bit better, and will make it look better for posing as well. I hope there's decent clearance on those bits there, like on the inside. Yeah, because they do there look will be. they do look like they could clip off that center squ- uh, rectangle. Maybe, I think it, I think it'd probably be okay. I'd I'd, mm. I'd be fairly. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it, just on the basis yeah. that Masterpiece have been doing fairly well for a for a while now. It's been a it's been a good time since Masterpiece Megatron first one mm. MP two. It's been a while since we had that. So yeah, yeah. Well, that was that was a, a long thing. Time ago. Yeah, one pin broken, half a toy. Yeah. Never forget. Yeah. Never. Uh, we actually got a reveal for a new Masterpiece figure as well. Who's yep painted. He's, he looks like he's basically done. Yep. Which is weird. Uh, they've decided to do Hound. Yeah. Can't say I'm excited. No, uh, I also... Maybe it's just because, secretly, I it's Hound's aesthetic. Mm-hmm. But I really don't like how he looks. I, do, I don't think the, the angles are helping. I don't no. think the, the pictures of it help. Um, or the face sculpt they went with. The face sculpt, he looks very sad. He looks like he knows what he is. <laughs> <laughs> They've just pushed but, me out. They don't love me like they do V three. The fact that yeah, the fact that his chest is literally just a hood, but it also means like his arms feel really far out from his body. Yeah, and his shoulders feel quite low down. At least again, from yeah. these images they look like they're low down. Yeah, and it uh, maybe maybe it's just the photo, and this figure will look just awesome in in standard, but. I mean, it's Hound, so I can't really care that I'm not digging it. Yeah. Because it's Hound. <laughs> but, but, you know, we yeah, know you we know you... why Hound is yeah. out, because he's part of the season one cast. And yeah, yeah, and so. they're running out of people to do. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, due to the Sepcons. They've do done a reflector. All, I think they've done. Oh, no, they haven't done Reflector. That's right. Mm. Do a better Star Scream. Do a real Star Scream. That'd be nice. Apart from that, they've done everyone. There's not a lot of Decepticons in season one. Right, so there's a Seekers. Yeah. So that's three molds. Three repaints. A four um, if you wanted to do the Decepticlone, which was the purple one. And five with Sunstorm. Was he on Earth? I don't think he, he was on Earth. No, but he was in season one. Was he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where he comes. Him and the uh, Acid few Storm. Others. Yeah. No, I think they might. Yeah, yeah. Acid Storm was season one. You've done Shockwave, you've done Soundwave, yep. you've done Megatron. You've done all the Soundwave's buddies. You've done all the tapes. So there's Reflector. And the Constructicons. In- Insecticons. Yes, the Insecticons would be good ones to do. Mm. I think, though, aren't they just doing the first wave of the toys at the moment, I think? Yeah, but then they, they, they do weird stuff like Sunstreaker or Trax. I thought Sunstreaker and Trax were wave one. Trax so not wasn't. The, Tra- the no, Sunstreaker, Sunstreaker was on the Autobot, but Trax was um, season two. 
Oh, all right. Well, preferential treatment for Trax, I guess. Yeah. Apparently, he wasn't very good, so maybe not that preferential. <laughs> um, yeah. But there you go. Uh, Hound, he's coming. Maybe we'll get better pictures of him soon. I hope so, because these ones aren't, uh, at least from mine and Mikey's perspective, clearly not that great. You know who yes. I hope he comes with? Actually, maybe not who he comes with, but I hope they give you a um, clear cutout stand of mm. the big giant robot he made for the Devastator <laughs> fight. You know, because that toy is never getting made. But just just do a clear bit of plastic with the the, the image photo uh, photo printed on, transferred on, or whatever, and then just a little plastic stand to stick it in, and maybe an effect where it comes out of the gun, so it just looks like it's doing a hollow projection. That'd be kind of nice. That'd be I neat. would lose my shit if they did. I care about that more than a hound. <laughs> if they do because a cliff it... jumper, they need to make lab coats for oh all, my god all, all of the Autobots. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Like, I'm actually going like, to go to Mord Meets the Eye Part 3, because that'll have most people in it, apart from, like, the Dinobots and whatnot. Mm. So, okay, so they've done, apart from Reflector, they have done the Season 1 Decepticons. Yeah, I'm not surprised. There's, like, no one. Um, who's left from, like, assuming we don't get, like, redo of every mold in the more cartoon-accurate thing. So, Jazz, uh, Mirage, Cliffjumper, Gears, Huffer, Trailbreaker, Wind Charger, and Brawn. Yeah. So, still waiting on Galvatron. Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mikey. Yep. Uh, and that's it. That's all of the, the masterpieces that were shown. But, you know, I think that's a fairly decent shown we see more a uh, better image of an up and coming figure a silent release who we didn't know about mm. maybe there's a reason for that maybe there's not <laughs> maybe there's not and we also saw an upgrade figure coming so a, a decent a decent oomph but since we're talking about upgrade figures mikey tell us about yep. another one this was not going how i predicted nor i so, um, at Wonderfest, we saw what appeared to be a heavily repainted and, in fact, retooled version of the Age of Extinction Evasion Mode Optimus Prime, the Voyager. Um, very well-received toy, generally considered one of the better Optimus f figures from the line. Um, so this figure looked like it had new shoulders, new leg bits, uh, new feet, new head, uh, with interchangeable face masks, loads and loads of new parts, right? Yeah. And it did seem like, okay, cool, like, I, I looked at comparison shots and like, yeah, there's a lot of similarities here. Um, except that's not what this is. What uh, first is of all, they? This is the Optimus from the Bumblebee movie, and people who have seen the clips from San Diego Comic-Con said this matches the design we'll see, in, in, including the colors. Yeah. So it is going to be a, a G1 colored version of the, the movie Optimus design. Uh, the evasion one, you mean? Yeah. Um, but apparently... Um, this is a leader class figure, a an entirely new mold, um, with articulated fingers, articulated feet, uh, waist, head, movable head. In fact, I think the heads got, can look up and down as well, based on one of these pictures yeah. and quite a metallic looking paint job. Apart from some parts. This, apart from his feet. Yeah. Um, and his hands. Um, and his Thighs. upper arm. And his thighs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, shiny chest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, so, I mean, I'm looking at now, I can see aesthetics lift, like, they've even got that, the art, not, I don't think it's as pronounced as it was in the Voyager, but that weird sort of bit in the elbow that, that may give him this sort of diamond shape when his arm's straight. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what yeah. you're saying. I can see that, but, like, new shoulders with extra articulation, new gun. I don't I don't know if that's based off anything from the old movies. Um the legs at first glance look identical to the Voyager, but then they do look more complicated, especially when you see the uh, vehicle mode. Do we know then has... if it's transforming differently? Is the assumption it it will be transforming I... differently just into the same shape? I think it's going to transform quite similarly to be honest, looking at like from the back it looks like it follows the same transformation scheme in the chest, just with maybe more steps to make it a bit more complex yeah yeah That's um and like extra bits on the roof and different like the smokestack is different yeah i like the smokestack yeah um so it's basically they way zhanged it <laughs> yeah yeah technically yeah they did <laughs> but they decided to way zhang it hardcore hmm. 
Um, so yeah, so basically we have an upscaling and significant re-engineering of a figure, which I can't think of Hasbro doing that beyond, like, in terms of upscaling anyway, the uh, Transformers Prime's final wave. Oh, where they didn't do shit to them, they just made them bigger. Yeah, like, uh, I think Predaking, they changed the dragon head. Did they? Oh, yeah, to be it? more show, to, to be more show accurate. But like, yeah. he was like, look, he's huge, and you get him for a Voyager price. Ooh. But he's huge. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think they redid the head for him. But you're probably right. This is unusual. Yeah. Thoughts? Uh, well, this toy, I've heard you for the most part uh, say a lot of people have enjoyed it. A lot of people thought it was good. Uh, I hear they like the Wei Zhang. It wasn't Wei Zhang. It was another third, um, an, an offshoot KO company. You remember they did the black one with the metal and stuff mm, that we mm, really mm. liked. Uh, they said it yep. was really good as well. This looks really good. I'm very much impressed. I kind of wish that this was the original design for Optimus Prime in the first movie. Yeah. Yeah, me too. You know, it's very much a G1 looking Optimus Prime for the most part, but with a lot of movie quirks to it, I suppose is the best way to frame it. Um, and if they're already building on a fairly solid toy, unless they fuck it up, <laughs> it should be good. My only, not concern, but my, again, Greeble, is I don't think the head's very good. It looks quite muddy in its detail. Yeah, like, yeah, I agree with that. Like maybe not muddy, mushy. Mushy is probably a better word. It's not very sharp, and the eyes are not painted desperately well. They've just been slapped over with a blue. It looks like there might be yeah. detail there, but it's been washed out by really thick blue paint. Mm. Um, but no, apart from, like again, that's a minor complaint. But it is the head, so it is fairly important. But overall, pretty pretty solid toy, pretty decent looking. Surprising, yeah, very definitely. surprising. Definitely would like to see a black version, of course. Yes. Uh, and I'd like to hear what people think of it when they get it in mm. hand. Like, it has the weirdness. You, yeah, it has the weirdness of movie Optimus Prime's uh, proportions. Like, the bizarrely long legs. Yeah, yeah. That that always look odd to me. And the really weird short arms. But overall, like, it looks like you know, a, a Wei Zhang upscaling. Like, hey, we took this design, we've improved a few points, we've added extra articulation, a few extra features, and we're, we're selling it at $60. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, the extra articulation, I think, is a big thing. Oh, definitely, um, definitely. Especially since um, with Siege, they're all they're saying, oh, we're going to add articulation out the wazoo, so... Well, maybe <laughs> ankle tilts. <laughs> yeah. This toy I'm has best, them. Best toy like... ever, Annie. <laughs> but... I'm very curious to see how this turned out. Very, very curious. Mm, yeah, same. I I will definitely be checking out like probably um Watafa's review. I think the the only no not problem, but the only issue will be its price will be high because it is a big figure. Mm. And at the moment there's no sign of American release date as well, so oh, that is something to be considered. Yeah. To be to, maybe not concerned about because I I'm sure they'll release it with the Bumblebee movie. It would but, be weird if they didn't, because that would mean, again, that Japan's effectively made a mold for itself for mm, them only to use, which would be which, odd. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah, i surprised. Yeah. That's right. Um, Yeah, will we move on? Yeah, I'll take the next two as Mr. Mikey. Uh, via Takara in Japan, uh, Takara. the Japanese are going to have the option to get the Monster Bots and the Throne of the Primes. Obviously, the Throne of the Primes was the SDC exclusive grey uh, or Optimus Primal colour of Optimal Optimus um, mm. from uh, some stuff. And they'll also be able to get the online exclusives, I guess you probably the best way to phrase them, of um, Grotusk and Repugnus. Repugnus. Yeah, that's oh. him. Uh, they also showed off the grey Ultra Magnus from Siege. Uh, so... Mm. Some nicer images of that <laughs> without the dry brushing. So that was a plus. He is a chunky boy. He's very big. He's very big. He feels like he looks like he feels like a leader class kind of size. I feel like when he's boy. colored, those those white inner legs are going to be distracting. Yeah, maybe. I d mm. I, yeah, I, it's one of those things. I suppose <laughs> it's one of those things that I can overlook and be like, yeah, yeah it's it. Okay, I I understand why it has to be like that. Uh, one interesting thing I suppose you could say is the fact that the MonsterBots will be LGX 
Legends EX releases, basically. Mm. And uh, Mr. Brickinator, I saw him. Uh, saw him on Twitter. Uh, to Twitter, 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 Twitter. He was tweeting, getting my hopes up, Mikey. He said, well, "What if? What if Sakamoto comes back to do the comics for them?" And I said, "Don't you fucking get my hopes up." <laughs> he better. Don't he you... better. Yeah, don't don't put them in the L, uh, the Legends EX line and not have Sakamoto make a comic for them. That just be uh, wrong. Why did they bring him back? Because they just get some random to do the comic. No, no. Because who would do Ran- the story? Do you know what that thing is? Like, yeah, yeah, uh, Transformers. Uh, the monster uh, reference that type in IDW, they show up. Okay, bye. My only issue with uh, a Sakamoto comic here would be it wouldn't be, potentially, it might not be in uh, Megatron City, Man Megatron City. <gasps> it might just be the, the the Beast Planet stuff, which I'd be yeah. like, be, I'd be least, less interested in that. But if it was set on in Megatron Mayor City, Megatron. yeah, it would have to have that. It'd have to have Best these guys coming to Earth. Best Mayor. Best Megatron. Yep. Best hero Megatron. He doesn't Damn fuck straight. Up. He had a tie. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> and he got all his Decepticons to wear suits. Yeah. Starscream and you know was what? the best he could ever have been as well. <laughs> yeah. Do you know who didn't like go around murdering people? Decepticons. Because they were True. too busy working an actual fucking job. Yep. <laughs> they, were, uh, they were civil servants. Yeah. <laughs> the, the best punishment you could possibly give them. Damn straight. Uh, so, yeah, again, these will be coming to Japan, which is good. Doesn't seem like there'll be any visual differences, at least from the, the images that they showed here, at least. I, I did like the fact that there was a little don't take photo. Oh, no, that it, it is that a don't take photo sign next to them or a do take photo sign next to them? I think it uh, is a do. No photo. No, that's a no photo. Is it? Because it doesn't have a line going. It has a red a red circle around it, but it doesn't have a red line going through it. I've never heard, seen someone have a sign saying, do take photo. No, me neither, but it's weird. You can also see Unicron's legs behind them. Yeah. Green Unicron, that's the thing. Unicron of love. Woo-woo. <laughs> so that's something. A little bit of interesting stuff there for Japan. Also, Mr. Mikey, Encore. Oh, yay? Yeah, we have another Encore <laughs> potential release, which is going to be Encore Big Convoy. That fuck. Uh, and it seems to be in a lot more anime colors, as I would describe, because I have the original version, and it's not as, um, again, I'm going to go with saturated as yeah. this version, uh, which makes sense. Cause, uh, have you done the thing where you take off all the armor and make a mammoth? No, no, because it's it's just, it's such a pain in the ass to transform <laughs> him. I, I, I've put him in robot mode and been like, and, and you're done. And I've also put his gun away somewhere, and I don't know where, because mm. that gun is stupid. That takes up so much fucking room. But Andy, it's big convoys, big cannon. I mean, you're right. It's just not. It's not conducive to a, a shelf display. It Big doesn't time. lend itself very well to a. There's a limited amount of space here for you robots, and you're not helping with your stupid trunk gun. Which is, I like. I love the one at the back with it at the back on his back. Yes. And he's just like, oh my god, you 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 are falling soon. Yeah, you. <laughs> it's a big heavy gun. Uh, there's also a big a blue big convoy, apparently similar, but not exactly the same to the Lucky Draw edition, which came came out in 1999. Uh, it's in it, which will be later introduced in the E Hobby comic as Primus Vanguard leader. I've never heard of him, but I'm about to wiki him. Sure, why not? Uh, there's no extra information on this toy so far. The small card next to him only reads Big Convoy. Blue version. <laughs> to hear the question, why is there a picture of the Dinobots from the old um, TV magazine in Japan? I don't know. But there is. That's behind them for some Liter- reason. Oh, well, okay. So Primal Vanguard Leader. Uh-huh. His, his, his official bio is the leader, cap, you know, capital block letters, oh, the uh, led the great multiversal Primus Vanguard. Yep, well. Against bad people. Okay. And he had an evil vanquishing matrix sword. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, a lucky draw figure that got repurposed into. Why isn't it Black Convoy? Why isn't it Nemesis Prime? I'd say definitely the Nemesis version from Universe, because that was a good repaint. And he had a story. I'll have to take your word on that, because I. He does. Remember. Like, he has a whole. <laughs> like, he is alternative um, Black Convoy. Oh uh, wow! Alternative before alter before. Alter- okay, so hang on, hang on. I got to like I I actually like that they have a whole story for this guy. So yeah, in the Cybertron comic, he shows up and you know fights all the three three H guys or whatever it was back then, 
And then um, he has the Matrix of Darkness. And at some point after that, he was defeated and had all his badness sucked out of him uh, by the Alternity. And then he was he he renamed himself into Convoy and became Black Convoy. And his whole thing is that that his little um, holographic anime girl guide mm. that they all have um, is always trying to talk him down from beating the shit out of things. <laughs> so he 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 hangs out with Alita Seven. Hmm. So I I'll be honest. I don't know why he. You, why would you do a random ass character? No one knows anything about. Oh, because e hobby. Yeah, because it's a repaint. Yeah. E hobby, re- no, not just that. It's e hobby. Well, that too. Yeah, and e hobby had more oomph over there than universe. But I would do Black Convoy. I would do Nemesis. Sure. Because they you know, because then then you can get this guy, and then you can get Alternative, and you have an entire character arc. There you go. That'd be neat. So, but yeah, what do what do you think of the idea of a reissued Big Convoy? I didn't think it was that hard to get, just on the basis that there was the the Korean version that's been bumming yeah. about for years as well. Well, I look forward to this guy being vastly overpriced um, and <laughs> having dubious quality. Uh, but d- d- Potentially, potentially dubious potentially quality. Potentially dubious quality. Um, big Convoy is kind of like Lyo. More like Galvatron and Magmatron. They were big ticket characters to get in your collecting days. Yeah, yeah. And And I think they're good figures. I think Galvatron holds up better than Magmatron. Oh, definitely, um, yeah. Ma- Magmatron has that problem of being a weird fucking combiner yeah um i always thought lyo and big suffered more um largely because of their gimmicks um Mm. i think big convoy is a cool design yeah um that looked better in the anime where they trimmed down a lot of the proportions yeah um so i think this is really cool i think this is a great opportunity i think if you can get the original or the korean release uh cheaper because you'll probably be able to um, unless you are super into anime accurate colors, uh, in which case have at them. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get this if it's ridiculous encore prices. I just look for a cheaper version that will be cheaper still because there's now an, a new official release, and, and I wouldn't touch the blue one with a barge pole. The the risk, the risk of these not being good quality, I, I definitely think should be in the minds of people just because yep. of. You know, past experience, you know, impressions last and bad ones last longer, so... And there have been a few bad ones lately. There have, there have, so... Uh, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell people what to do, but i definitely advise to just wait to see and hear if the if it's okay mm. before jumping in. Uh, like you said, it might be safer to just get the, the original if you can, unless the prices on them have just gone to a silly degree. I, I will say that uh, Big Convoy is a decent figure. He's not mm. a good transformer, as the transformation's just a pain in the ass, from what I recall. Um, and he did like the the greebly stuff on him makes him a little bit faffy to play with, but he's stronger than Leo Convoy. I think mm. the do you remember the Robot Masters? Yes, that was a much better Leo Convoy, much much better because they didn't for some reason on the original Leo Convoy. His chest isn't molded in; it's detachable and it what? floats. Yeah, it 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 doesn't. It pegs in through the connecting to the arms, which is weird. Okay. Um, from what I recall, it's been a while since I played with mine, but I remember the Robot Master being better because it was less faffy, uh, and it also didn't have the the weird gimmick of the thing spins around because of a propeller button that you kept pressing over and over again you could still do it but it wasn't a button that you pressed on the robot master version yeah it, you could just spin it with your finger like a child which i did uh <laughs> mikey do you want to take us over yeah you may as well do the last two stories because they're fairly quick yeah they're easy ones first up we have news on transformers cyberverse um it has been confirmed that in 2018 via the hasbro's investors website um that uh, Cyberverse will air on Cartoon Network. Uh, the official statement reads, We continue to execute our multi-screen content strategy for Transformers with new product innovations supporting each of our unique stories. Uh, yeah, that's what got it, Machinima. In addition to our feature film, Transformers Bumblebee, coming in December, we have a new kid-targeted animated series, Transformers Cyberverse, this fall airing on Cartoon Network. There you have it, kids. If you want to watch it, you'll see it in Cartoon Network. Um... We should all be grateful it doesn't look like Thundercats. Yay! And here, the, I, like someone said, like, oh, you people complain about the animation. It's like, for Thundercats, it's just like, the animation looks fine. The animation style is another question altogether. 
Um, the animation looks quite solid. The animation well, style... It, sh it should be, because it's simplistic style to work yeah. with. <laughs> the style looks like someone saw Steven Universe and said, there's a cash and I can have. Mm -hmm. And if you try to tell me that's not what's happening, then you're lying to yourself. People have also been telling me the the uh, Teen Titans Go movie's funny, and I'm like, I don't believe uh, you. I don't trust those reviews. I've seen the reviews, yeah. and I'm just like, no. Yeah. No, I've seen Teen Titans Go. It's not a funny show. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't just me being like, I missed the old one. It's just not fun. The show got funniest when it started stopping and going like, oh my god, we're shit and we're not as good as we could be. I Those were the funny, that, but... even then, they weren't funny. No, I was going to say, to me, that wasn't funny. That was just annoying because it almost felt like they were rubbing it in. I just felt kind of sad. And I thought one thing, it was just like, you know what's great nowadays? You've got the old Teen Titans show for older fans. You've got new Teen Titans Go for young fans. And you got Titans for adults. And I'm just like, two of those... Fuck that man. Two of those are not things I want to deal with at any age. No. Any age. By the way, I rewatched that trailer recently. Which one? It, oh, the, oh, the Titans, Titans one. one. Yeah. It gets worse the more you watch it. I could buy that. I won't. Why isn't Beast Boy green? I mean, what what is green, Mikey? Not pale white. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then it's like, he's got green hair. There you go. Ooh, it's the same thing. Oh, uh, why is Dick Grayson murdering people? Yeah. I don't think that's ever happened. Not even when he was a secret agent. Where his whole thing was like, I have a gun. I don't use a gun. Look at my nice ass. <laughs> that, was an, that was an entire remarkably decent comic. But like, he had a gun. He didn't use it to shoot anyone. Yay. But no, let's have him snap someone's neck and go, fuck my man. But yeah, um, I, like I said, a lot, I think a couple of weeks ago, I think the writing of that clip we saw has me intrigued even if the animation didn't come across that amazing to me so i'm definitely more curious about cyberverse than i was mm, cool um any any thoughts on this andy um i mean i'll i'll watch it i'll definitely give it a try um i'm tentative about it as i am with most transformer shows i go into these days mm. so I'll, I'll give it a uh, give it a shot and uh, hopefully it'll be better than I'm thinking it will be. You know, mm. I'm I'm mentally prepared for stuff I won't enjoy. Yeah, I think that's that's healthy. Sure, maybe not. I don't know. We should probably uh, look at the the good things in life rather than yeah. preparing for the worst. <laughs> life is pain. <laughs> no parents. No parents. Oh my god! On this TFW ad, like you know, they have the ads for eBay on yes. news stories. First one, SDCC, 2010, Throne of Primes, and Bumblebee Volume 1. Both items, $190. Ooh, no, sir. If I want those, that's a lot of money to pay for dinosaur cassettes. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what you're buying. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so uh, the last bit of news is from TFCon, and it is that they are announcing Ian James Crowett will be a guest at the C Chicago Convention. Chicago. Uh, Chicago! Um, so this is going to be October 26 to 28 at the Crown Plaza Chicago Air Hotel and Conference Center in Rosemont, Illinois. I L. Chicago, I'll go, Illinois. I'll go with that. That sounds that sounds good enough. Illness, Chicago illness. Yeah, <laughs> no illness. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Ian James Corlett, he played Cheetor in Beast Wars and Beast Machines. He also played the Maxwell Computer, Sentinel, and C Clamp. And go. Uh, he was. Yes, he was the first English voice of Goku Yeah. Uh, in Dragon Ball Z. I can't comment on the earlier uh, Dragon Ball dubs. Um, so he is going to be joined by Bud Davis, who's the voice of Generation 1 Dirge, Metroplex, and Predaking, and Stephen Kenner, who voiced Fortress Maximus, Harrodhead, Hunger, Mindwipe, Scattershock, and Scorponok, with more TBA. Um, the TFCon Chicago 2018 hotel block is now available. Book your room while you can. Advanced tickets for attendees are also now online. And just to double check if I'm right about the website, it is www.tfcon.com forward slash tickets. So get in there. From what I understand, the Chicago show is pretty good. Uh, Andy. Mikey. Remember the time Ian James Collect came to Auto Assembly, and we I all do. felt little, we all felt slightly sorry for him because he was at the same show as Greg Berger. Uh, yeah, the second time Greg, th second was it the second or the third time. It was Greg the second. Berger? Okay, it was the second Greg, and it was just like, oh no, Ian, we love you. Any other year, any other year, this is the wrong year. <laughs> yeah, you just got burgered out. I'm afraid. Yeah. Yep, you got hamburgered. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and that's the news. That's us done. 
Sweet. Yeah. Uh, before we go on to what we did this week, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this in here and now because uh, mm-hmm. you know I don't want to forget and my memory is shit. Uh, we did get some Patreon changes and upgrades and people joining, so uh, we're gonna thank Mr. Richard Delafield. I think is how you say his name. <laughs> uh he's he's joined up and he's doing two dollars each month so thank you very much i hope you're enjoying richard i hope you're enjoying the extended stuff and the the moon base woo woo and all of our bollocks that me and mikey and friends who come on the show talk about if you all didn't enjoy that bloody comic show this week oh my god how long were we recording that it felt like a while that's for sure (laughs) there was a lot of comics to read there were a lot of comics and uh, we've also got uh, the dirty diva herself, Nicole, upping her pledge from two dollars to ten dollars. Oh God! I mean, oh good. <laughs> I mean, oh, we're, God. Lo- we're locked into that friendship now for another few years, I, Mikey. But I don't like her anymore. <laughs> You've got her. No, I don't. She's a dick. <laughs> if you, if you say that, she will beat you. She won't sell her fucking toys. <laughs> she will throw you through a wall. She's done it to people before. Do you remember <laughs> Mark, Kitty Cat Ravage? <laughs> Oh yeah. Do you remember the the hole she made in the wall with him? It was shaped like Ravage. I don't even know how that worked. It was. Poor guy. <laughs> uh, we also got a message or rather feedback uh, from Skirt. Do you remember Skirt? No, you don't, because uh, this is the first time you Skirt signed up to to. Um, I, actually, I think I did send you this feedback. I may have not. Ah, uh, you sent me some, but it may not have been from Skirt. A name was not included. Oh, it was probably from Skirt. Do you want me to read it out? I can read, read it out. Uh, hello, Moonbeast Two in brackets. Is ease? I think that's a good way to go. Are we Moonbeast? Here's a question straight away, Mikey. Uh, it's not intended. Are we Moonbeast Two Is or Moon Moonbeast Two Ease? Depending. Do we Moonbeast or does Moonbeast us? Hmm. I think I've been doing it long enough that Moonbeast is me. We are ease. <laughs> ease no errs. <laughs> uh, generally, I'm not. In, uh, I'm not one for the whole submitting feedback slash actively seeking to communicate with other folks unprompted thing. Uh, but attempting to be better at uh, at it when it's clearly so well deserved. Oh. So I'm no. reaching out just to say that uh, that was a stellar interview Mikey did with John Barber. I mean, he's lying because you're a yes. terrible human being, Mikey. I listened back. It wasn't stellar. <laughs> quite frankly, John was very disappointing. Oh, I th- <laughs> poor, poor John. <laughs> Come at me, John. What you got? Your ship's too busy fixing every continuity hole, and now you're an editor-in-chief. You can't stop me. You realize, like, during winter, you'll be walking back from the zoo, and you'll get forced <laughs> down an alley, and John Barber will be there in balaclava and a knife. <laughs> yes, me what I got. You very carefully in a line, but it's like a line he has to go over three or four times, but he's managing to get every hole. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Are these filling enough plot holes for you, Maggie? <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek, John. You <laughs> used the wrong Star Trek. Uh, over the past few months, years? Question mark. Uh, I've been. Uh, I, I've been. Hang ma- on, it feels like years. Well, but it's only been months. Come on, man. You lady. haven't been talking to Mikey. That feels like years. Oh fuck off! Off my life. Every it day. Is. We've known each other for a decade. It's true. Entire lifetimes. Uh, there I've... are children who have been born and become president in this time. Ew. Ew. Uh, I've been making me oh, okay. It's I've been making my way through. That's a slight flummox on my part. My making my way through the back catalogue of shows. Oh God! And particularly the interviews on Moonbase Two, uh, the Moonbase Two team has done. Uh, all seriously uh, talented creatives. You've managed to coerce. That's been scratched out. Convinced <laughs> to come on the show. Damn. <laughs> We've got them under drug charges. We've got photos of them doing things they shouldn't be doing. Come on, I <laughs> will release it to the public. It's mostly just James. Mostly just James. Mostly just James. Uh, with whatever is next for the IDW comics and Transformers media in general, Cyberverse looks like it could be fun? Question mark. Uh, I look forward to listening in on future great interviews like the one in brackets. Uh, and the ongoing shows, Andy and Mikey, and the odd guest, or visiting newborn, newborn, visiting newborn, do in general, of course. Indeed. I mean, you've got a newborn. You could bring her on the show if you wanted. You could bring one of the lemurs on, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> anyway, sure, I, I said, I literally said today, wouldn't it be nice if I stuck my niece on the roof with them, and she, they could raise her like a wild child. 
What what did your sister say to that? Um, she looked at me in horror. Uh huh. Um, but when I said it to some of the coworkers, they said that would be a really good attraction. Hey, there you go. See, someone in, someone knows yeah. how to have fun. This is just <laughs> boring, Mikey. <laughs> well, yeah. Throat to the wolves. Uh, anyway, once I get going, uh, I drone on. Eh? No, I, I wouldn't say so. Uh, I'll just wrap it up by saying once more, great stuff across the board, Moonbase 2. Hell, I've even enjoyed the mini Kamen Rider breakdowns. Oh, good. 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 Watch uh, Kamen Rider. <laughs> Not all of them. Leo is making me worried. Yeah, well, I think it's it's safe to be worried about uh, shows when it could be, like, decayed, potentially. Mm. Potentially. Uh, oh, che- oh, hmm? Honore the O doesn't have the same ring. Does it, it? it doesn't, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, it ends by saying, cheers, skirt. Uh, P.S. So yes, skirt is a dumb handle, I know, but I've committed to it now, uh, so Dems de breaks. P.P.S. Yeah. Uh, was also glad to see Mikey took some time to heap some well-won praise on ROM vs. Transformers uh, in good. the aforementioned interview. Colors, art, inks, lettering, and writing was just solid. Uh, was just such a solid book all around. Uh, I'm now really uh, hoping Star Drive gets folded into the future continuity. Uh, and maybe a proper triple change toy? Question uh, mark. I mean, one can hope, right? Uh, <laughs> exasperated ah. sigh as reality sets in. A flame toys. Yes, that'd be a good flame place for it. Flame toys. It's a shame it wouldn't transform, but again, it's a safe place. This is something I actually didn't ask you because I completely forgot to uh, during mm. the comic uh, episode, Mikey. So I may as well do it here. Um, Prowl, uh, mm. uh, Star Drive. And his team, it, it's not my imagination, right? But it's been a long time since we've seen and heard from them from that one, two, sorry, that yeah. two issue thing, right? Yeah, where they were, they're communicating with Pyra on some level. Yeah. Um, I, I, Sarah Drive is on one of the Unicron covers. Is she? Oh, okay. She is with Bumble. She's on a, a cover with Bumblebee and Strongarm. Hmm, Good. I hope that means um, she's in the comic. I can't imagine. I hope it so. Um, so I miss. I, you, would they have left Prowl out of this? Like Maybe. either they'll. I mean, they've got Optimus Prime twenty two to twenty six to show up, and they've got Unicron three to six. See, I, w- so, I would only imagine they wouldn't. On the basis that maybe they don't have enough time to do everything, but I can't hmm. imagine John would allow that to happen. No, <laughs> it no. would be and also thread. like I really want Prowl to come back. Like even if it just would come in and just like I'm a dick. <laughs> doesn't do anything just like i'm a dick yeah but like i remember someone i was checking the wiki page and someone said like some of the artifacts he was on his ship were unicron related oh okay oh, fair so enough. it would make sense that he'd been like checking all this jazz out yeah okay no it, it just was one of those things where i was like that star drive where the fuck has she been you know yeah i like star drive also such a good design yeah really good design fun character too uh, but thank you very much, Skirt. Um, Skirt sent the message via Patreon, uh, so that's one of the ways you can get in contact with us. Mikey will mention the rest of the ways once yes. we get into that section of the show. Uh, thank you, Skirt, sir and or madam. Yes, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it is really very much appreciated to get feedback. A lot of people don't send feedback, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, no, no one's forcing you to do it, but it is very much appreciated when it does happen. And I will apologize that I, it, I've had these messages and these things from Nicole... Uh, and from Richard for a while, but we just haven't had the time to cover them cause, since we had those two uh, conventions back to back. Yeah, it was a bit just a bit nuts there for a few weeks. Yeah, so I'm glad I was able to cover them now at least. But now, Mr. Mikey, we can move mm. on to what have you been up to this week? What have you done for fun, apart from uh, um, chasing after lemurs in vans? Dicks! <laughs> Not actually a joke, it happened. Um, but So I'm obviously I've got a few different things over the weeks. Um, but I will cut it down to three or four, right? Um, of significance. Um, first of all, uh, Mr. Stupid Monkey. Yes. Uh, of, of fame of Daniel Stupid Monkey. Um, sent me Slash. Uh, oh. Power of the Prime Slash. Um, nice. For postage. For the cost of postage, which I thought was super, super decent. Um, so I, this is the one Dinobot I definitely couldn't get in this country. Um, apparently, uh, Snarl and Sludge have been sighted in Ireland somewhere. So I'm going to see if I can find them in Limerick at some point. Um, but yeah, so this is a figure, like, a lot of people are flipping out about, like, I heard the words, like, the deluxe, but smaller. Um, I oh. would honestly say this is in the league of, like, Cosmos. Which in, is a high league to be in. In terms but, of the, the quality of it. Yeah, like, it's a good, solid figure. It's not breaking the bank of what Legends have been doing over the last few years. 
Um, but the aesthetic is really nice. Um, her robot mode is really her big selling point, ironically. I, I'm not crazy about the raptor. Mm. Largely because, like, it's pretty much a brick. There's articulation, but be, the feet don't... The feet are sculpted in, like, this weird half-bent back pose. Yeah. Which means you basically have one pose you can do. But her robot mode surprisingly expressive. And and this is a weird thing to be a heavy selling point, but it really, really is. If you flip her raptor mo her arms down, you know the ones that hang off her back? Uh, yes. So if you put her into a sitting position, she can stay upright. Oh, okay. So you can give her a lot of really crazy, like, hey, highly expressive sitting positions, and she'll hold them. Oh, really? Like, like she's in it, like she's in, like doing that whole like fake air chair thing. Right. So right now I have her like one arm nonchalant the other side, the other one like holding onto her toe. And she's just, like, I like, the, this is, like, the weird, remarkably fun selling point of this ah. to me. It's just, like, it's such a, a, a silly thing, but it's surprising how well she pulls it off. Mm. So you can have, hey, guys, uh, raptor chair. It, it can be done and should be done. So I'm really, really fond of, her, fond of her. Like, she's super, super cool. Like, the dinosaur mode is the weakest thing, which is kind of something I can say about all the Power of the Prime Dinobots, which is a shame. But, um... So she's super, super cool, and I'm really grateful to have her. So thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what I have done, uh, let's see. Comic-wise, uh, Flash War ended, and they had an epilogue issue. Um, those last few issues are basically, if you are a Wally West fan, they are speaking directly to you. Oh, so you hate it. Oh, yeah. Um, but there is actually a line like, like there's something like, oh, to Wally, Barry's his Flash, but to a whole generation, even if they don't remember, he was their Flash. Like, there is an issue that is literally talking to you, the reader. Hmm. Um, and it's framed like Iris is writing a letter. It does spin off into the next event book, which is Heroes in Crisis, I think, um, where Dan Didio decided it would be funny to hint that Wally's going to die, and never, no one laughed. Uh, that's no right, one, yes. Yeah, no one during that. that panel laughed. Yeah. <laughs> there was, like, an audible silence of just, like, don't you fuck in there. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, so like it, Flash War, I, I definitely recommend if you're... Because it both highlights what's great about Wally and what's great about Barry. Hmm. Which is an important... It's not like Wally is given a lot of focus to the detriment to Barry. Uh, Kid Wally West, Kid Flash, he gets kind of screwed over for character. But I think that's largely because he's been moved to the Titans book. And from what I understand, that is a dark piece of dank. Where characters are not particularly well written. But, oh no. And it has Lobo's daughter. <sighs> called Crush. And a... <laughs> Crush. <laughs> that's just fucking lazy <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like like i remember young justice had slowbo yeah <laughs> but like that was like a, 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 a lobo got turned into a child mm -hmm. and then he turned back into normal but then it like a, he fissioned off this kid version of himself he was like new slowbo oh god but he was actually really good i really like slowbo he was just like re like he started hitting on every woman in the in the team it was hilarious nice because it was basically this child who talked like Lobo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a really good read. Um, TV-wise, we've got three of note. So first of all, Darling in the Franks ended. Um, it had its big finale episode. Um, not what I'd call an upper episode, um, but certainly one that's in tone with where the show went. Um, basically, that show started as a very, 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 very good... A sort of like here's all the stuff of Evangelion that m I personally would like and it then examines them mm -hmm. and a lot of character work a lot of very good character work and then it had the twist right before the ending and it suddenly morphed into Gurren Lagan. like yeah, not even I joking I think that was it. the point where you can tell where Trigger dropped out because Trigger yeah. pulled out and they left it to whoever was it A1 yeah videos? yeah and yeah you can, it really does feel that like you can you can put a line in it and go here's where trigger pulled out and you go ah okay yeah like the, <laughs> because basically in the creative process trigger basically pulled out of the thing at the end yeah and and it it's really no like it is really noticeable because the guys just went okay so it was a trigger it felt like it went okay they were doing a trigger show to aliens and Gurren Lagann because the ending is totally very 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 similar to, to Gurren Lagann's like in yeah. sort of the beats they hit and the visuals and just the, the tone of the end, the, the, the bittersweetness and everything else. And it's just like, this does not feel where this show was going. And when you realize what was going on behind the scenes, it's just like, this is definitely not where, the, where this show was going. Mm. Like, because whenever I saw interviews with the people behind it, they were just like, they were so 
like where this story was going was huge. Like I am convinced there was a transhumanist thing in here originally. Yeah, I it, it was that. it was going to be about transcending the human humanity, and that's where why the immortality came in because the whole immortality thing stopped being important after the twist. Yeah, so like I, this is ninety five percent of a very good show, not a good show, a very good show that is done over at the end. And I think that's a real shame because endings stick with people a lot more. And you than... were quite positive on it for mm. after the, the change happened yeah. for a well, long time as well. I was like, okay, I trust these guys. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. And then you realize those guys left. <laughs> and you were left with basically the less competent people. Like, it's not badly written, per se. It's just an idea that does not flow with what they were creating. At all. I so and also like really like this show was really feeling like was it going to subvert the downer ending mm. and then the girl logged it like when you if you I don't know if you've seen it but like the 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 way the 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 tone of the final boss fight and the oh we'll be back and <sighs> then every at the end it just like this does not feel at all like the same like the bad guy redemption bit when the show was clearly leading up to a bad guy gets his ass kicked bit. Yeah. Like, that was just like, I am I am so... It's just not... It ain't right, because that show... I mean, it's a bit of a Marmite show, but as far as I'm concerned, like, if I, I could watch everything up until that twist again mm. without hesitation. The problem is then I'd be watching an incomplete story because it really feels like that story was just abandoned when Trigger pulled out of the the deal yeah so, um but i can't hey corporate stuff i can't blame creators for either being left with something unfinished that they didn't have all the ideas for or not getting to carry out their original plan i, I, I can't blame the, the creative teams for that you know sure visual still very high quality but yeah it, it knocks a show down from like a nine or a ten to overall a seven because an ending is just so impactful compared to the rest of the series you know mm-hmm um, but yeah, so Darling the Franks, I'd still say check out a lot of it. <laughs> You'll know when to stop. I don't uh, think I could say that yeah, just because, like you say, it's an incomplete story. So I know it's, it's I, ugh, I really want to say that. In fact, I'm, I, having said it now, I feel bad for saying it. Yeah, because it just that show was going to be so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's frustrating as fuck. You missed the landing um, so bad. Yeah, yeah, it it Evangelion the landing by turning into Gurren Lager, <laughs> ironically. Um, by the way, ending of Evangelion's TV show is bollocks, and anyone who tells me otherwise is lying to themselves. Lying. Um, not that's not even an artistic thing. I honest to God think that they had no idea what they were doing and they were trying to buy time for that bloody movie. Mm-hmm. I honest to God think that. Um, but hey, Shin Godzilla's uh been cancelled. Good. The the sequ- the sequel to that's been cancelled, and Evangelion four is in production. Yeah, I see. So, because basically Toho said they're going to do, they want to reboot and do a whole new Godzilla series after the anime. Oh, really? Okay. Mm. So, I don't know if it's going to be live action or animated or whatever. Speaking of which, uh, the new anime movie came out. Uh, Godzilla, the city on the edge of battle. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it like that. Um, Right. The issues with this anime adaptation of Godzilla have crystallized in my head. The core story is solid. It is very Urobachi. It has a lot of Urobachi moments, mm-hmm. um, both in this movie and the last one. Um, there's a lot of talking, but there tends to be in an Urobachi project. He is a talky man. The What people are saying frequently is good, but one, they're saying a lot of it. And this is a two-hour movie. And they're saying a lot. Two, um... The actual visuals are what are is killing this film franchise. They reuse the same shot of Godzilla about six times in one movie. I mean, the exact same shot. They don't even recolor anything. Um, and the actual... Vi- like, they have this thing about nanites and, oh my god, what are they doing? And the, the, the story is telling you that this is horrific. This is visual. This is visceral. And the visuals are, we've recolored this model. And that's not satisfying, you know? Um, and the, the Godzilla design in that CG animation, which is being done by the same guys who did Knights of Sidonia, which is a very ugly show. 
Um, because of the nature of the show and its colors, it all just blends into one. And three, there's barely any Godzilla in this movie. Mm. Like, e- don't like people who complain about Godzilla 2014. There's about two, maybe three minutes of Godzilla on screen in this two-hour movie. Also, no Mecha Godzilla in a movie about Mecha Godzilla. Like, it's not. I don't even like their Mecha Godzilla design, but put him in a movie. But like next, they've already got the promos up. Uh, like that's the thing. Like there, are, there's a lot to like here, but it is really blocked by the very poor production choices. Like, I don't know. It feels like someone wanted to pad this thing out. Like they have maybe an hour's worth of story in here, and they decided to double it. No, oh, that's so. not good. So I, I, I don't. I think it, I do really feel like maybe Orobachi got wrote this thing, and someone said we're making it longer. Oh. I don't know, just something about it. Because I've seen how he handles this kind of stuff before, and he, he can he can do a movie script. Yeah. Uh, and and he's done... Hell, he's done CGI movies that have better visuals than this. Like, the complete lack of expression in anyone's face is very frustrating. Yeah. When the guy, when the guy sounds like he should be like Aaron Bloody Yeager from Attack on Titan. <laughs> and, he you know, his crazy faces, and this guy, I am very upset. Um, so, yeah, not one I'd super recommend. The, they've confirmed the last one is going to be Mothra and Ghidorah. So, we'll see. Um, and the last thing is Build. Kamen Rider Build is up to episode 46. Oh, um, nearly done then. Right? Nearly done. It, they've confirmed it ends at 49. Okay. Oh, wow. So, super close. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> they're, they're going shown in anime on us, Andy. <laughs> uh, that doesn't sound good. I don't know if it is. It's, it's like, hey, we're going to run towards the enemy. But someone here is going to stop one of us, and we must stay behind, so the rest may go on. And I, I get the feeling they're going to be doing this for a couple of episodes until they've basically made it like uh, Grease, Rogue, and Cross have all had to stop to fight someone else. Yeah. And then, and then the genius. Um, something like uh, the episodes I've seen, they've been solid enough. Like I, my sort of not super engagement with Build uh, beyond the hey, it's competent, well done show. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't hit my favorite buttons. Mm -hmm. For me, I think Build will end up in the, it's a a very solid show, especially if you're new to Ryder. Right. Um, and it certainly has the highest death count in years. (laughs) Um, but I would also say, like, it's not pushing the boat out. Okay. Um, It's it's fairly safe. Yeah. And it's a comfortable show that they, I think they were very wise to get someone in who was not of the Ryder stable. You know, who was someone from a non-Toku background. Yeah. And another thing that worries me about Zeto, it's being written by the guy who did Nin and Ninja. Ooh. Yep. Uh, being directed by the same person who did, I think it was Gaim and Nose. So that's at least mm, something. Yeah. But the writing, is, and TV writing is kind of a big thing. Yeah. Um, And it's being written by the guy whose only Toku experience was the Ninja, and the rest was some mediocre animes. So we'll see. Maybe. The, uh... A Japanese anniversary shows never work for me. It might be alright. Laura Baron as a suit is wrong. Mm. I am saying that right now. Like people who kn- who have seen the shows will know what I mean by that. It's just like it's like having Ankh as a suit, just a suit. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that's that's those are the only things I want to touch on. Um, I did other things, but not important. Andy, what about you? Uh, I finished uh, Darling in the Franks a while ago as well. I wasn't desperately impressed. Uh, for me, it's very much a skippable kind of show. Uh, mm. I watched uh, Maho Shoujo Saito. Uh, Why does that sound familiar? It's a anime that is based on uh, uh, girls who have misfortune done on them uh, get contacted by a site administrator from a girl site. They get sent oh, a magic yeah. wand. Oh, yeah. I've seen an episode of that. Did you see the first episode? The one with the neck slash? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, um, it's very... The first episode... The first few episodes are very much misery porn. Uh, very, very heavily misery porn. Like, a uh, girl is bullied quite heavily, and if you don't like that, then you won't like the start of the show. But then it kind of quickly goes into what I'd say is a stereotypical magical girl show. Once they get past the we all hate each other, once all the magical girls who meet up team up together, Mm -hmm. uh, because there are legit reasons why they hate each other, but once they're past that, it becomes a very stereotypical story. Um, It's fine. Uh, It didn't amaze me, but it was was easy watching. It's one of those... Does hmm? Does it feel like one of those shows that was made after Madoka Magica, but without, you know, knowing what Madoka Magica actually worked? 
because I've noticed a lot of those show like this this whole like we're gonna darken these kind of shows. They always felt to me like we've seen it, another show do it better. We we might as well have a go. Maybe maybe uh, it does have that dark start to it, but then it just kind of goes into it. Hmm, it just feels very very samey apart from the mm. unpleasant bits were quite which are quite unpleasant when they happen um maybe give it a try uh but i don't think you're gonna miss anything by not watching it uh mm. it ends on a clearly a cliffhanger hoping not not a cliffhanger but it ends on a oh you've beaten this person well there's an entire council of other people that you might need to beat in season two if we get into the show my god that's kind of a you know that kind of shown in style thing mm. so yeah it, it was all right it was fine um i've also tried lost in space the netflix show oh. again it's like it's it's okay mm. uh i i didn't hate it i just wasn't wowed by it either i'll probably just keep watching it just because it's it's something and it's not awful mm. um but it ain't, <laughs> it ain't the 90s movie, Mikey. <laughs> Where is Matt LeBlanc? Well, yeah, where's Joey Tribbiani in space? <laughs> and, uh, oh, fuck, what's his name? The guy who plays um, Dr. Smith, and he's uh, Gary Oldman. Where's Gary yeah. Oldman? He's great in that. Gary Oldman's mm. amazing. <laughs> and they're, sh- they're shitty 90s-styled robot. Oh, oh yeah. So good. Oh, I need to rewatch that fucking film again, I tell you. Yep. Um, so yeah, the new one again. It's easy watching, um, but I, as I'm watching Deep Space Nine, I'm like, oh, man, Lost in Space ain't Deep Space Nine. That's for fucking sure. But uh, Andy, it's edgy. It could be. It's, maybe it's Discovery. It's not. It's whoa, whoa, It's not Discovery. It's 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 watchable. <laughs> Highly underrated show. I'm told. By who? Wrong people. Oh my god, like maybe it got better by the last three episodes, the, I the hear three that episodes you, I didn't watch. I hear if you didn't like the rest of the show, you would not have liked that those endings. Oh, well. Because e- even people I saw who liked it said, like, I saw a lot of complaints. Did you? Okay. Mm. That's not a good sign, because I wasn't a fan of any of it, really. No, I didn't, I didn't think it was a great show, like no. Star Trek or otherwise, I just didn't think it was a great, it has a lot of plot contrivance. Oh my, oh my, Mikey. And the Vox storyline was terrible. The Vox? Are we talking about uh, Beast Force or whatever, now? <laughs> whatever, whatever his bloody name was. It I, was I really remember. shit. Yeah. That was, a, like, not just bad. That was a shit storyline. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have I done apart from that? I've just... Been, oh, I got my uh, Tempest of the Storm set from uh, from Games Workshop. So I've been um, building my ghosts and painting them. I painted up a set of four glade wreaths. Uh, mm-hmm. Which I put up on the Fluff and Hammer. If you want to go and check them out, it's, they should be on my Facebook as well. It's uh, been I made a mess of them because I decided like ah maybe red and green will work, and it didn't. It it, <laughs> st- it strongly didn't work, so I had to go over them with black. So there's certainly a lot of places where where I've been going over with the black and trying to fix things. I've gone into places that I shouldn't have gone, and they get a bit messy in parts, but. Uh, the bases, I think, turned out really nicely because the, I think I did the stone on them very well and I, I drew the little vine, uh, painted the vines on and painted the roses. I'm like, oh, that looks quite good. Well done, Andy. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Um, at the moment, I've got a load of um, chain ghasts all primed up and painted white. I've decided tomorrow I'm going to buy a Tupperware container and some uh, cooking parchment paper, I think it's called. That was called wait, baking paper. You know that's that stuff, uh, and I'm gonna ba- uh, basically make myself a wet palette, which should mean that I don't waste as much paint. Because usually when you you put your paint out and you thin thinning it down on like a plastic container or something like that, it dries out really quickly. Uh, making a wet palette means that it won't dry out for weeks, so hopefully you shouldn't uh, lose as much paint. That's the hope mm. anyway. So that should be a fun project to do uh, tomorrow when I go out shopping. Anything else? Anything else? Just been reading my my uh, Age of Sigma book. That's the thing. Oh, I've joined up Audible now and got a free Ooh. audio book. Uh, because again, I I love me some Warhammer Age of Sigma forty thousand Horus Heresy audio books. And if I spend seven ninety nine a month, I get a free book each month. And each audio book from Warhammer is about twenty four pounds or more. So. Oh because they're like each book's like ten hours to twelve hours long, 
Uh, so, you know, if I'm spending eight ninety nine a month or eight pounds a month and getting a free book or paying eight pounds ninety nine instead of twenty nine ninety nine or something, you know, that's that's yeah. a good enough deal. And then once I've got all the books I want, I just cancel it and then I've got them all. It's good times. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, did I mention that the um, let's open the drawer. What's the fucking called? Uh, I got the Zoom. Uh, the Patreon money has gone into the Zoom now. Uh, I've got it in hand. I haven't had time yet to uh, finagle it and, and make it work, but I've got it now. So coverage for uh, TF Nation is sorted, basically. Uh, I'll be interviewing people who I might not have interviewed before. I plan to interview the Mighty Maz. Um, thanks to my, my lovely Wayne connection, I'll be talking to Maz. Maz One. is the guy uh, who does articles on Transformer websites. He's a fairly popular lad. Uh, I'll probably get to talk to other people who I wouldn't normally get to. Uh, mm. I've tried going through official channels for for TF Nation for interviews, but they have not been uh, receptive. I haven't had any... Bird. I haven't oh. I haven't had any word back from any of them, so I'll be going through and doing my uh, <laughs> guerrilla covert operations interviews. You mean, you mean ask people? Yes, uh, as best <laughs> I can. I'll, I'll very very sheepishly go can, can I have an interview for my shitty podcast I've been doing. For you do. Years. I'm recording a video for you to show to Merigrid. What? What do you mean? Well, if I I'm not there this year, unfortunately, because cash and any cash that does come in is going to come in too late yeah so i'm recording a video that if you do get to talk to her you were playing Camargo. is this a video that i'll feel really uncomfortable about showing like as like sexy music plays and you've got steam in your room and you start doing strip tease since you're doing your push-ups now and what not not in the first 10 minutes okay well i'll know when to cut it off then <laughs> and done with the video now you'll do the interview play me the rest of the video and then you'll <laughs> Let me do the interview. Play me the rest of the video and we'll talk. <laughs> okay. I'll leave this with you and I'll come back later. <laughs> you knock on the door later on. Can I come in? No! <laughs> I'm busy. And her voice is suddenly like really deep. <laughs> Sounds just like Alex's voice. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. They're, they are the same person. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, but no, I, once I need to, I, it came with a big, thick manual, the zoom, uh, mm. and I looked at it and went, let's, let's just go on YouTube and see if I can find any tutorials. Cause I <laughs> it's, it's not going to sink in until I see it in hand. So I need to, when I have time, get around and start figuring out how, how to do that stuff. Mm. Um, but that's good. That's all for the podcast. So that's all funded by people who supported this show. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's the uh, Zoom 5. It wasn't the, the 3 that I was going to get because there was a, a prime deal on where you got... Basically, it was either get the the H4N or get the H5N for the same price, basically. And I was like, well, it's better. So I'll get that one. <laughs> you know. Mm. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's us done for this week, Mr. Mikey. Otherwise, I'd just be waffling on about crap. So yeah. where can people find you on the internet, sir, if you want them to? You can find me on Twitter as Irish Paleo and YouTube as GVolf3. If you would like to contact us here on Moonbase 2, we have many, many methods. Oh, we have a couple. <laughs> um, you can send us something over on Twitter on the Moonbase 2, or you can send us an email. The address is themoonbase2 at gmail.com. For a reminder, that's to the letter, not to the word. I have had people say, I've been sending it to the Moonbase 2, and they're just like, have you been using a letter, a letter or a number? <laughs> what have they said? Then then they get sheepish. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's, like, it's, it's a two. It looked like a two. It's always the number. It's always the number. And I said letter earlier on, and I was just like, no. No, it's not a letter. It's a number. <laughs> N- numerical code. Um, but yeah, but send in anything you like there, guys. Uh, feedback, comments, whatever. Um, don't forget we did our uh, comic show which was released for the Patreons uh, on Friday it was it is the first of the big ones there are several to go um, it covers Optimus Lost Light from this month which is a lot of issues and it's mm-hmm. the one for the Patreons where we have our Unicron extension and also you'll find out um, for non-Patreon u- users what the story is with Unicron for you in the future yep um, yeah that's it um Apparently, my John Barber interview was very good, so you check that out. That's publicly available now. <laughs> um, but yeah, Andy, what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr, CCTFW, on YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find this podcast on the Moonbase 2 forums, or on Twitter, or on iTunes, or on Facebook, or on Libsyn. 
uh, one all those fancy RSS feeds and you can head over to YouTube for Moonbase 2 Transformers podcast. If you want to hear it, listen to it kind of that way, that's a, an option as well. And you can head over to the ccbunker.weebly.com, see all my nonsense and woo-woo. And if you want to help out the, po- pa- pa- the podcast by heading over to patreon.com slash moonbase2, doing $2 each month, uh, you'll get the extended version of From the Files of Teletron 2, like Mikey said, where this week you'll get eight issues. Eight fucking issues we cover this month. We died inside. God damn, that was a lot of comic. <laughs> and we died outside. Yeah. Um, you also get uh, Moonbase Woo Woo, which I will get up as soon as I can. It's just I've been very busy. Very, very busy. Um, that needs to go up. Ah, that, shit, that needs to go up real soon. <laughs> shit, yeah, because it's near the end of the month. I need, I'll, uh, fuck, I'll, I'll need to get that done tomorrow as well as doing this podcast crap. Um, is that all? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you get interviews early as well and all that kind of bobbins. So, yeah. Uh, patreon.com slash moonbase2 uh, thank you Mr. Mikey for joining me for this week's show always happy to sir and me and Mikey will catch you next week for more moonbase2 action woo lemurs are still dicks you are now leaving